Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I can only tell you that I have been patiently waiting to do what I'm about to do for greater than nine years. December 28th, 2012, the ICE unit arrived at my property during the afternoon. This is the immigration force of the Federal Investigative Bureau, the FBI. ICE arrives and they tell all of my neighbors that they're looking for me. They're saying that I failed to register as a, an offender. I'm not required to. I was not required to then. I was never required to. But they had a warrant. I am out having dinner with one of my neighbors and his family. I invited them to dinner because they had helped me out because my vehicle had broke down on the road and they came to assist me. And as a payment for them assisting me, I invited them to dinner. We went to a smorgasbord. And we actually had a very good time. And while we're there, he gets a call. His brother says, the police are there. They're looking for me. He asked me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going home. But the police are there. I know. And I go home. And 15, 20 of them pull up. Some of them, they may have their guns or not. I'm not really caring about that. I could care less. The officer comes up to me and I back in and I park the car and I put the emergency brake on and I said yes what, what can I do for you are you such and such yes well we have a warrant for your arrest really okay hey I just got finished eating I gotta go to the restroom and so they sat up and watched me as I went to the restroom told them hey you can come into the house but you cannot take any pictures you cannot do any searching of my property they came into the house, well, we're just so that you don't say we stole anything. Uh, I told you, you can't search my home. They took pictures anyway. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I know exactly what I'm doing when I speak. I, I just want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. When I am speaking to them, I know exactly what I'm doing. They think they're getting around it by coming up with some clever little phrase. Well, we're doing it for this reason. I don't care what you say you're doing it for. I said you can't search my home. Do you know they searched it? They didn't search it thoroughly. They just went through things. We just needed to make sure nobody else was here. Like I said, you do not have my permission to search my home. Okay. So we gathered my things, and then they started dictating what I could and could not bring with me. I said, that's my hat. I came in here with that hat on. Well, you're not taking it. Okay, y'all want to play? No problem. I said, uh-uh, <laughs> you can't cuff me from behind. I got muscular dystrophy. Um, that right there causes way too much pain. They cuffed me from behind. Left me in handcuffs for over an hour because it took an hour to get back to the city. They put me in a holding tank at their location. And they come and get me first thing in the morning, drive me to the court. The first thing I do is I say, can I have a pencil and a piece of paper? They gave me a pencil and a piece of paper, and I wrote out a money order for $2 million because I was planning on giving it to the judge. And they bring me in to speak before the judge. I'm about to pull up the judge's names now, um, but this is not like, you see how this is not set up like the other courts, uh, their website. Now, Gustavo Gepi, this is the idiot. And I, I will call him an idiot who decided because I was helping other individuals in the jail system to bring me to his court to hold me there for more than five hours and then return me back to the jail. And then had me transferred and removed from the other inmates that I was helping so that I could no longer help them. His name is Gustavo Gepi. When I viewed his profile and watched, I saw that he was, and he wasn't 
the chief judge at the time. I saw that he was the up and coming. He had the persona. He had the look that we want to make this person the face of our court. And I saw that they were grooming him. And now, Ada Delgado Colon, who had been there longer than he, let's just say she was the chief judge. And now he is the chief judge. Exactly what I anticipated would be the case. I am looking for the list of judges. So if you can give me a second while I... Um, let's see. I'm just going to make sure because Puerto Rico has two different courts. Gustavo Gepi was at the second court, the junior court or the old San Juan court. And now he's the chief judge, so apparently he's moved to New San Juan and has, you know, acquired some other skills. I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have a consult that I have to do in the next 20 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and let you see what's been going on while I've had you on pause. Right now, this is a list of the judges. This is Carmen Ceriso. She was the very first judge that I had. Carmen, very respectable person. A lot of respect for Miss Carmen Cerezo. She was obstinate at first, treated me with no ounce of respect. And so I had no respect for her. However, I found out that she had recently, uh, during the course of our ordeal, because I literally... I literally wrote a letter to Carmen Cerezo and I basically told her that no one has ever caused me harm and not suffered harm themselves. That everybody reaps what, them, what they sow. And I, I say that specifically and intentionally. No one has ever done me wrong. I'm trying to get to her picture. And I don't know where hers would be. Um, I'll go over. No, we, we don't need to go all the way back here. These are the old fogies that don't exist no more. I'll go over this briefly with all of you. As I said, everybody who's ever done me wrong has always suffered a consequence. Always suffered and it has it has always proved true that's why i haven't been in such a rush to make people pay for their stupidity right after i wrote that to carmen about how nobody has ever done me wrong and i also wrote it to sylvia this was the other she's a judge now she was a magistrate then okay we were able to get this prostitute to come in as a magistrate i refuse the magistrate as i always do but nonetheless as they always do force the magistrate upon you again no respect for her whatsoever i thought she was going to be honorable because that's what i give everybody an opportunity that did not happen ladies and gentlemen carmen cerizzo shortly after my letter less than five days lost her husband he died and i literally felt horrible because i didn't want her to think that was a wish of mine i was just making a point i apologized to the young lady because i told her i know how it feels to lose a best friend this was her husband somebody she loved, and I would never wish that upon nobody. Carmen would do just like McVeigh. She would recuse herself from the case shortly thereafter, her and Marcus Lopez. And after she recuses herself and Marcus Lopez, then Adel Delgado Colon, this hoe, and again, I definitely have no respect for this, sorry, and Sylvia become the new appointed idiots for the matter. Ada Delgado Colon did everything in her power to exert her power, to show me she was in charge. 
This is the judge that nobody liked. This is Judge Fuste. Judge Fuste, he was causing a whole lot of problems. He knew he was getting ready to retire. In 2000, he was giving people sentences of 50 years, 60 years. You know, he was giving people outrageous sentences. And the inmates did not realize what Fuste was doing. Fuste was giving them large sentences, not because he was abusing power. Nobody was paying attention. Fuste was giving these individuals large sentences so that they could appeal, because the appeal is automatic, it's a criminal case, so that they could appeal the sentence and get a less sentence. It took me about uh, three weeks going over several of the cases, looking at the way he was doing it, because he was pissed off at the First Circuit Court of Appeals. And they were pissed off at him, and they couldn't get rid of him because he wasn't violating the law. He was just giving excessive sentences. And <laughs> I just, I think it was his way of getting back at them and showing them how stupid their system was. So I had respect for Mr. Fuste, and even though he did what he did, and it may, it may not have been the quote-unquote right way to do it, I probably would have done the same exact thing if I were in his shoes. I kid you not. I understood the logic in what he was doing. He wasn't trying to become an appeals court judge. He wasn't trying to move up in the ranks. He had been on a court for that long. You know, 2006, you might say it's not a long time. He had enough. Uh, I'm sorry, 2006. Fuste was on the court for longer than 2006. That's Gustavo Geppi. Fuste, 1985 to 2016. He had been on the bench for long enough. And thus, Fuste gets my respect. However, the other ones that I talked about, uh, this is the old Fogey. Okay, he had been on the bench and he's still on there. And he really hasn't stepped up to the plate. He wasn't mean like the other ones. He wasn't trying to harm people like the other ones. But this was an idiot. And Gregory, this was the punk, okay? He literally was a punk. He caused so many problems for some of the inmates because they didn't like the affidavits that the inmates were putting on the record. I gave these guys my word that I would not forget about them and I would not let it go. So I'm doing a separate complaint after the one I'm doing now to address those issues. What I did not see is the information about the magistrate here, and that kind of bothered me. I do see the district court judges, but I don't see anything about magistrates. See, it just says the judges, but it doesn't say anything about the magistrates. And Gustavo, not Gustavo, well, all of Gustavo, I think, was a magistrate at one point in time, but the very fact that these uh, intelligent creatures continue to operate the way that they do, the fact that the United States continues to do this to people, I personally have had enough. There'll be individuals, I'll, I'll tell it to you like this, I don't see too many other people who are putting him putting themselves out there like this. But I am willing to do that. I am willing to take the heat. I am willing for them to come after me as a result of this. Let it be. As long as you all get to have some relief. Now, I need to let all of you know, I have to update this document one more time. Why? Because this document, let's say if I wanted, because what I want you guys to be able to do is to add another name. But you see how it stops? You're should be able to continue going and going and going and going and it stops it doesn't give you the room to add more names so now i have to go back in and i have to create or correct each one of these boxes not just that box but these boxes too because even this one after a moment it stops I want you to be able to fill in as much information as you possibly can. This one you can fill in information because I did change this block. These agents denied my person due process equal protection of law as afforded by the Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, you only want to bring in the Bill of Rights. Now here's the other part. This right here, this one I clicked it, 
that box showed up and then it went all the way to the edge. I don't know if it will print that way. That's my problem. So now I got to correct that. That's another glitch. Those are two glitches that I have found. Because my incident took place between 2012 and 2014, the end of 2012 and the middle of 2014, 22 months, I check each one of these dates. What I wanted to do was put the part of what the prison did, the detention center did, and I didn't have that. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is not going to be a long video. This is just showing you what I did. On this section, what I did, because I wrote this, so I've already read each one of these. Because I read each one of these, oh, there is one that I did check that I didn't check correctly. I'll show you in a minute what, what took place, uh, what I did. So there's one about mortgages that I put in here. See, what I'm going to suggest is that those of you who have mortgages yeah this is a glitch in the transference there we go okay that is just a glitch i don't think this um stays off to the edge once it's printed but i'm going to check it out to make sure what i'm going to do is i'm going to disable that box from being clicked on the way we just did so that it doesn't get this configured because there's no reason you can't change any of this you can't type anything in there so there's no reason for it to be clicked on so we're going to uncheck that access to that just like i did on this one now we're going to get to like i said i just checked each one of the boxes because i knew but the fact is just like you i have to read all of them all over again to make sure they apply okay Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I wrote. On December 28, 2012, I was arraigned before Magistrate Joseph Lopez of the San Juan, Puerto Rico Federal District Court. At that arraignment, uh, sorry, it's quoting this top up here, and that's what I wanted to see. But at that arraignment, I challenge, we want to say the jurisdiction of the court, not to jurisdiction. I challenged the jurisdiction of the court. Marcos Lopez stated that he had general jurisdiction, provided no proof of such general jurisdiction over an American citizen. See, the courts don't have general jurisdiction over you. They don't have cablanche jurisdiction. Their jurisdiction is limited. Pay attention, people. The jurisdiction of the court is always limited. It's never general. The reason why they have general jurisdiction is because you appear before them. Marcos Lopez received a credit voucher for $2 million to help offset any costs and or bail requirements. He accepted this payment on the record. The court notes this and will follow it into the record. The Federal District Court at Puerto Rico held my person for greater than 22 months despite continual demands for a speedy trial. In law, you have the right to a speedy trial. 180 days. They don't get to go beyond 180 days. Two years violates the federal due process right to a speedy trial. They knew that. They still persisted. Then they wanted to follow the federal due process right to a speedy trial by sentencing me, convicting me, and releasing me on the same day. Amazing. From the record, it appears that the Department of Justice petitioned the court for a warrant via a probable cause hearing, whereby they failed to notify my person of such hearing and of my right to be present during the examination and or witness testimony and or introduction of evidence in violation of the Bill of Rights probable cause clause. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever there is a request for a warrant, there is a probable cause hearing. They must present the request to a magistrate. The magistrate then weighs the evidence and the information presented and then issues the warrant if it finds probable cause. That's called a hearing. That's an ex parte hearing. It is illegal when your rights are involved. You have the right to be informed before you can be deprived of any significant due process right. They do not inform you. 
That is against the law. From the record, it appears that a grand jury was impaneled, whereby a true bill was issued. I'm not going into detail about what a true bill is and what a true bill does. I'll do that later. I personally and specifically demanded to be present at this due process hearing as is my right and was ignored by the officers of this court. The court ordered my person to be held in the Metropolitan Detention Center at San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it's supposed to be for over the, uh, where, okay, that's correct. Where over the course of 22 months, the rights to access the court, to access medical, to hygiene, to religion, practice, as well as the right not to be deprived of the basic and it's supposed to be basic necessities. Okay, to include sleep and a healthy diet. Uh, sleep deprivation is a, a tactic that the prisons use. You see it happening in Nazi Germany during the concentration camp era, and you see it happening even today. As a matter of fact, in the state of California, a judge has issued an order as early as 2016, specifically because certain prisons, especially the female ones, were keeping the female prisons prisoners awake. Literally, waking them up all during the night. Intentionally. Each of the aforementioned continuously denied without intervention from the court, despite several complaints and a request for correction. The court has a duty and a mandate to ensure any party for whom they commit to the custody of the administrative branch receives due process of law. By their order, they assume responsibility for the well-being of those whom they claim responsibility and or jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, if the court commits you to the administrative branch's jails, the court assumes responsibility for such commitment. They do not waive that responsibility, especially when they ordered it. So they are responsible for your well-being, not the prison. So when you complain to them, they must correct it because they ordered it. You're there under court order. So the courts are responsible. That's what I'm saying. Do I have to go into those details? No, because the morons I'm speaking to, they already understand. So I will go through the spell check and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to get ready for that consult. But in the process of getting ready for that consult, I'm also going to upload the file. Sorry, i got to upload them again because I'm doing the document. Now I see where the errors are. You saw I corrected this so that you can fill in as much as you want. Well, i got to do the same thing with those other lines and other markers. Bear with me, but it will be taken care of today. Thank you. Have a good day, all. Just wanted to let you guys see how we do this. That's why I made the font smaller so that you can put in more information. You have three pages of type that you can do. You don't have to give all the details. You just make short statements documenting what happened and that it violated your rights. That's it. The rest of the document will take care of everything else and anything else that needs to be saved. Uh, excuse me, needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you guys appreciate this. I do hope that you understand how valuable this information is. In the next video, we'll explain exactly the power of this, what to do when they say no, and how eventually we all get to come together because this is where we're going to go. Hold on. We're going to go here. And let me put y'all pause for I know that many of you have not put all the pieces together. Some of the long-time legalese, legal-wise persons have realized what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, do you not know that if you petition the Attorney General to deal with something that deals with the public welfare, and the Attorney General says no, that you can assume the role of private Attorney General and prosecute the case yourself? Well, guess what? When each of you are denied, you will notify me, and then we will proceed under the Private Attorney General Act to get redress. <laughs> no, wait, wait, hold on. You guys are not getting it. 
You guys are not understanding this. Do you see where we're headed? This has been the plan since, well, 1999, when I first went to the court, and they decided to hold me for an extra year and a half in prison without legal grounds. And they've been blocking me ever since from correcting that. Right now, from the Puerto Rico case, do you know that they've denied me my right to an appeal to this very day? Everybody has the right to appeal, especially if it's a so-called criminal conviction. They have said, no, I don't have the right to appeal. They have, my appeal was going on for three years, and then they dismissed my appeal without anybody responding. We were supposed to have oral arguments and everything, and they said no to this very day. So I've had enough. Everybody wants to say this or that about me. You knock yourselves out talking about me, you ignorant mother... I'm sorry. But what you cannot do, any of you, is provide me any proof of anything that they're saying. Yeah, they put all kind of stuff on the record. I've challenged all of it. And they ignore me. It's okay. I know. I know. I know. I'm crazy. I'm a lunatic. I'm an idiot like your mama. I understand. No, you must have misunderstood that comment. When I said that people are saying I'm crazy, I'm a lunatic, I'm, you know, insane and all that stuff, like your mama. No, I was saying your mama is that. I wasn't saying, like your mama, <laughs> I understand, you know. I wasn't saying that she was an understanding hoe. You follow me? And that's for the idiots who think that they can talk about me and it's okay. My platform is greater than yours. I, There are a lot of people out there doing videos and talking about me, and they've been doing this behind my back for the most part. Some of them are actually doing it at present, thinking that they're going to get me to talk about them, pay attention, so that they can get more people to view their junk. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't promote morons like that, and I'm not going to give them the time of day. I want you all to understand, I don't advertise because I'm not looking for more viewers. Those hoes are looking for more viewers. So if you want to view their junk, go right ahead. You are not my people. See, several of my people have notified me of these idiots. And they've done that because, as they said, they don't agree. They don't like what they're doing. And I, I'm there for you. But as one of Jehovah's Witnesses... Individuals talk about Jehovah's Witnesses every day of the week. They always have something negative to say. But I've never seen one person who has personally met a Jehovah's Witness have something negative to say about Jehovah's Witnesses at that point. But everything they have negative to say is because of what they heard. I don't mind telling people what I've done, but I'm not going to let any of you judge me for what I've done. Especially something that happened over 20 seven years ago you must be out of your minds so I say that so as to say nobody puts themselves out here on front street knowing all of the junk that's gonna come their way for doing it pay attention and still remain trying to help people they have placed me in a prison in a jail at least six times because I keep trying to help people. They did it in Arizona. They did it in North Carolina. Did it in New York. Did it in Puerto Rico. They did it here in California. Pay attention, people. And I have not stopped. I guaranteed you that I would not stop. I'm not going to stop. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for those of you who keep complaining to me, who keep coming to me and saying, give me redress from my adversary at law. I am not God, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow him to use me to help you. Is that okay? Do you mind if I try to help people? Do you mind if I try to assist people even at my own jeopardy, even at cost to myself? I hope you do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I hope you do not mind. I hope you do appreciate it. Have a good day.